In this video, we'll talk about bursitis and how they present. It's an important topic because they like to ask about it as well as it's commonly seen in the clinic and we need to know how to deal with it. So bursa is a structure that surrounds the joint when the bone interacts with the ligaments or tendon. You need to think about it as a cushion and moderator between these structures to help decrease the friction. Now, this structure can be traumatized by overuse or direct trauma, as well as surrounding inflammation. And that will result in two types of inflammatory response in these structures. One is a chronic, and these patients present with a swelling as well as thickening without any signs of acute inflammatory response. And when you examine these patients, you will think they might have uh, like lipoma or cyst. So keep in your mind that chronic bursitis can present like these diseases as well. Now, what you need to know about acute bursitis, when the patient comes to the clinic, they will have the typical symptoms of inflammatory response, tenderness, swelling, warmth, but other things you need to look at is, does the patient have systemic symptoms? And when you do CBC and labs, they will have high white count in addition to CRP and DSR. And the other type, they will have no systemic symptoms. They will have only local sim symptoms and normal white count CRP and DSR. Why this is important? Because management will be different. Although you have to aspirate both of them, patients with systemic symptoms, you need to consider that they have infectious acute bursitis. So you need to start them empirically on antibiotics and cover for the most common cause for acute infectious bursitis, which is a staph aureus. While the patients without systemic symptoms nor elevated white count inflammatory response, they probably have acute bursitis, non-infectious though. So they don't need antibiotics and you can manage them conservatively. So now after you aspirate, you need to know what characteristics are present in infectious bursitis. So white count will be elevated and the fluid will look like purulent as well as a gram stain and cultures can be positive. Now in non-infectious bursitis, white count typically will be less than 3000 and the fluid will be clear and of course negative culture and gram stain. Remember the cutoff here is the 3000 compared to the synovial fluid analysis which we talked about previously. Now the last thing is do you need to do any imaging before diagnosing and the answer is no need for that. The only thing you might need to do is just to rule out other things but for bursitis diagnosis no need for any imaging. Hope you guys learned something and see you in the next one.